So we get the big uh, face-to-face um, opportunity. Bash at the beach. You know, we've talked about it before, but I want to talk about it again. Actually, let's give some proper context where WCW was beforehand. Slamboree 94 is the most recent pay-per-view. You had 4,000 fans in Philadelphia. When it comes to Bash at the Beach, the first Hulk Hogan pay-per-view, 14,000 fans. So that's a lot different. And in addition to that, you had a 0.48 buy rate for Slamboree. It's a 1.02 here. So like three and a half times the fans, more than double the buy rate. I mean, right away we know. And by the way, that Slamboree show is headlined by Sting and Vader for the vacant WCW international title. So that's a big opportunity, Sting and Vader. That's a big main event, but not nearly as big as Bash at the Beach. And I know you're going to enjoy so much great success, Eric, with Nitro and with the NWO and these dome shows. I mean, it's going to be an incredible run, but bash at the beach 94. When you look back at maybe the most important moments of your career, that's gotta be up there, right? It was up there. And certainly it it was such an exciting time and the anticipation for me personally, you know, having that very first conversation I had with Hulk Hogan, when I gave Rick Flair my home number and said, Hey Rick, could you, pass along to Hulk and I'd love to talk to him. I got that phone call like at one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning one night. And, uh, it's like, Oh, can't believe I'm talking to Hulk Hogan. This is going to be great. From that phone call to being in Shaquille O'Neal's house, because Shaquille O'Neal was a part of this event as well. Um, and, and, and getting that kind of support, it was all just so exciting and so much fun. And it was anticipation and then for it to actually happen and, and to get the results we did was, it was exciting and it was kind of a relief <laughs> for all the reasons that you talked about just a few moments ago, you know, that yes, the ratings were soft, probably a little disappointing. No, nobody was like reaching for the razor blade to slit the wrist or anything like that. It wasn't that, but it was like, Oh, I was hoping for a little better, but to be able to double the buy rate to get 14,000 fans in and we got a lot of press, you know, that was another, another component of this that made it exciting. Hulk wrote in his book, the guys at WCW were just getting into merchandising, but after Minnesota and my time with Vince, I knew how to cut a merchandise deal with a saber. My legal counsel, Henry Holmes convinced WCW that I should receive more than half of the gross merchandising revenues from Hulk Hogan products that I would share with WCW, a percentage of gross revenue from all other WCW merchandise after expenses. So this has been something that's been discussed a lot. I think Chris Jericho is maybe the first guy who brought some attention to it, but that Hulk was not just getting paid for Hulk Hogan, quote unquote dolls, but all of WCW, just the other wrestlers, the brand. Is that accurate? And do you feel like if it was that it was fair? Because he it's not accurate. Okay. It's not accurate. You know, if somebody's got a contract out there that can show me otherwise, I'll apologize publicly. I don't have Hulk's original contract here. I really don't. Right. Um, I'm sure somebody listening does. There was language in Hulk's initial contract that gave him the lion's share of his merchandise, a much larger percentage of, of his merchandise than other WCW talent were getting. But there, to, to my knowledge, as I sit here and talk to you, Hulk Hogan wasn't receiving um, royalties on merchandise that wasn't his. I don't believe. Again, it was a couple minutes ago. So if somebody's got a contract out there, including, you know, Chris Jericho or, or anybody else that can prove th- that I'm wrong about that, I'm, I'll be grateful for them for pointing that out to me. But I don't think that's the case. Uh, Jason wants to know if you had to do it all, all over again. Would you start Hulk in a feud with another wrestler and then chase flair for the title? I guess the idea is if you could go back with the benefit of hindsight, would you have changed anything about his on screen stuff he did in that first year? It's an interesting idea. And I think I could have fun, you know, kind of retro booking that because I think there would have been some stories and there would have been some interesting ways to do that to, to, kind of hold off on Rick while Hulk is 
working his way up the heel food chain, so to speak, until he finally gets to Rick. That'd be the baby face chasing the heel. I like that. Basic storytelling. I dig that. Um, but it wasn't possible at that time. You know, Hulk Hogan was a baby face. Was it going to turn Sting heel? No. Vader, there were issues with. Um, it wasn't ready yet. So who 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 else? You know, who are you gonna put who are you gonna put Hulk in there without kind of losing some of the mystique while he's chasing Rick? If it wasn't Sting and it wasn't Vader, who would it be? And the answer is probably no one. <laughs> 